Welcome to Clinical Gap. Thank you for all your views and likes for the previous video. Today's topic is Phases of a Clinical Trial. Trials can take place only after satisfactory information has been gathered from the preclinical or animal studies. While preclinical research usually provides some general information about dosing, the effect of a medication on human body can be unpredictable. There are different phases depending on the drug or device. Let's have a look at these phases. Drug developers or sponsors must submit an IND or Investigational New Drug Application to health authorities such as FDA or EMA before beginning clinical research. Trials can start once approval is granted. It proceeds through Phase 1, 2, and 3. During promising Phase 3, drugs can be marketed through NDA or New Drug Application. Then it goes to Phase 4. Phase 1 is also known as human pharmacology as it looks for pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameters. Phase 2 is also known as exploratory phase as it explores the safety and efficacy of the drug. Phase 3 is also known as confirmatory phase as it confirms the safety and efficacy of the drug. Phase 4 is also known as post-marketing study or surveillance as it happens after marketing of the drug. Success rates. Approximately 70% of the drug from phase 1 move to phase 2. 33% move to phase 3 and about 25 to 30% move to phase 4. In phase 4, about 70 to 90% of drugs successfully stay in the market and the rest could be recalled from the market if safety is at risk. Let's discuss these phases in detail. Before phase 1, there is another phase called as phase 0. This phase 0 is considerably a new idea from US Food Drug Administration or FDA, though it is not mandatory to be conducted. This is also known as human microdose studies as they have single subtherapeutic doses given to 10 to 15 subjects. Subtherapeutic dose is a dose which is too low to cause any therapeutic effect. Pharmaceutical companies perform these studies to decide which of their drug candidate has the best pharmacokinetic parameter in humans. It is also done for compounds which are, or its derivatives which were never exposed to humans. If medication acts differently than expected, the investigator will likely to do some additional preclinical research before deciding whether to continue with the trial. Phase 1 This phase aims to figure out the highest dose human can take without serious side effects. In addition to evaluating safety and ideal dosage, researchers also look for the best way or to administer the drug such as orally, intravenously, or topically. The study participants are around 20 to 100 healthy volunteers or sometimes people with a disease or condition. These trials are usually conducted in volunteers who are disease-free. However, if the drug is expected to be very toxic and is intended for serious indications such as cancer, it may not be ethical to introduce the compound into healthy volunteers. Therefore, in such cases, patients with disease or conditions are preferred. Length of the study is up to several months. The purpose of the study is to determine the safety and dosage. 
This includes safety studies or pharmacovigilance, safe dose range, the dose which is usually a fraction of the dose that causes harm in animal testing, and identifying side effects, tolerability, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and route of administration. Let's see what is pharmacokinetic. It is described as what the body does to the drug. It refers to the movement of a drug into, through, and out of the body. This involves ADME, which is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Pharmacodynamics. This is described as what a drug does to the body. It involves receptor binding, post-receptor effects, and chemical interactions. Type of phase 1 studies. There are several types of phase 1 studies, but the common ones are SAD or single ascending dose, MAD multiple ascending dose, and food effects. Single ascending dose. In these studies, a small group of subjects are given single dose of a drug and observed for a period. If the pharmacokinetic data is in line with predicted safe values, the dose is increased in a new group of subjects. Dose escalation is continued till maximum tolerated dose is reached or defined. As you can see here, each subject cohort receives a single dose. For example, if cohort 1 receives 5 mg of the drug and upon no significant result, the dose is increased for the next cohort to 10 mg and the dose increment is continued in other cohorts till maximum tolerated dose is reached. The maximum tolerated dose is the highest dose that will produce the desired therapeutic effect with acceptable side effects. Multiple Ascending Dose or MAD In this, a group of subjects receive multiple low doses of the drug. Samples of blood and other body fluids are collected at various time points and analyzed. This gives a better understanding of pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic of the drug. As you can see here, the subject cohorts receive multiple doses at different time points. Cohort 1 for week 1 receives 20 mg and for week 2 receives 40 mg followed by 60, 80, 100 and so on. The amount of the drug increases for each new cohort of subjects. Blood samples are collected from participants at different time points with respect to the drug, administered and analyzed for the determination of pharmacokinetic of the drug and its metabolite. In general, a better understanding of how the drug is processed by the body. Food effect. Food effect studies are conducted to know the potential impact of food intake on the absorption of the drug. These studies are usually run as a crossover study with volunteers being given two identical doses for the drug, one after fasting and one after a meal. Phase 2 Phase 2 trials are performed on larger group of patients and are designed to determine the efficacy of drug and to continue the Phase 1 safety assessments. Study participants are up to several hundred people with the disease or condition. Length of the study is up to several months to two years. The purpose of the study is to determine efficacy and side effects. This is divided into Phase 2A and Phase 2B. Phase 2A specifically designed to assess dosing requirements as to how much drug should be given. Phase 2B specifically designed to study efficacy as to how well the drug works at the prescribed dose. 
Phase 3. Phase 3 trials are randomized, controlled, multi-center, and provide most of the long-term safety data. It is done to confirm efficacy and safety of a new drug. Study participants are 300 to 3,000 volunteers who have the disease or the condition. Length of the study is 1 to 4 years. The purpose is to determine efficacy and monitoring of adverse reactions. Phase 3 is also divided into Phase 3A and 3B. Phase 3A studies are used for approval of the drug from the appropriate regulatory agencies. The results of these studies are included in the submission package to regulatory authorities. Between submission and approval, Phase 3B studies are often performed to obtain additional safety data or to support publication, marketing claims, or to prepare launch of the drug. Phase 4 It is also known as Post-Marketing Surveillance PMS. This is the practice of monitoring the safety of a pharmaceutical drug or device after it has been released in the market. Study participants are several thousand patients who have the disease or condition. The purpose of the study is to determine safety and efficacy for longer period. Length of the study is usually less than four years. Post-marketing surveillance can further refine, confirm, or deny the safety of a drug or a device after it is used in general population by a large number of people who have wide variety of medical conditions. This involves testing on certain population such as pregnant women, new age groups, races, and other types of patients who are unlikely to subject themselves to the trials. Post-marketing surveillance uses several approaches to monitor drug and device safety. Some of them are electronic health records, patient registries, and record linkage between health databases. This was all about the phases of a trial. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed or